Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Walking. and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today, we're going to be going over the Manus Spiral from Galileo over here, who I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce his name, so I'm going to be calling him Galilee after this point forward. So, that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like, leave a comment down below about how you feel about it, and subscribe to me if you want more videos featuring me, which I have plenty of. Um... So first things first, I really do think that out of all the galley units, it's actually funny how many other galley units that did not need a spiral from Trials of the Mighty got a spiral before uh, Lee over here. Because he definitely has needed one. He used to be the best wind spiral back when it was just him and Ranzel. Because Gala Ranzel, if you did not know, used to be one of the worst units in the game. Him and Gala Mim kind of side by side as two of the worst units to ever be a Gala. And after the buff that buffed absolutely everyone in the game, that changed and Gala Renzel kind of ate up his lunch. And then Gala Nod came out, then Gala Reborn. Oh, it's not Nidhogg. That'd be a very silly unit to give a Reborn. What the hell is the name? <laughs> I cannot believe I'm forgetting his name right now. The Wind Dragon starts with an... Okay, one moment. Zephyr. Zephyr was his name, Gala Zephyr, and then Gala Volk, and now there's not even outside of Gala Zephyr, just a buttload of good wind units. It used to be a time where there wasn't a lot of good wind units, but after a certain point they decided to just go whole hog and release a lot of good wind units, and it kind of made my boy Lee over here a little bit worse for wear. Very unfortunate. Um, so he's definitely deserving of a spiral, and let's see if this is a deserving one for him. So I'm going to go over all of it and then give my opinions on it. Okay, skill. Feathered Gale. Deals damage to surrounding enemies, reduces their defense, dispels one buff from each target, and inflicts poison. If this skill is used during Shielding Stance, a variant called Sparrow's Protection will be used instead. Sparrow's Protection. Increases the entire team's max HP for the remainder of the quest and greatly increases the user's defense. Damage is 490 over one hit. Or and damage 510 over one hit. Skill energy required 300 and 456. Special effects. Dispel buffs. Defense minus 5%. Last 20 seconds does not stack. Poison. And during shielding stance, same skill energy requirements. Special effects are HP 10% and defense 60%. Last 15 seconds. Uh, Pinion Slash deals damage to enemies in a line and reduces their strength. Poison foes take extra damage. If this skill is used during shielding stance, a variant called Parrying Slash will be used instead. Parrying Slash deals damage to enemies directly ahead and inflicts poison. Oh god, what have I done? I'm fine. Uh, where was I? Uh, parrying Slash deals. Um, Extra damage to the skills using shielding stance, a variant called parrying slash will be used instead. Parrying slash deals damage to enemies directly ahead and inflicts poison. Damage is increased against foes with reduced defense. Damage is 510 over 2 hits and 550 over 1 hit. Skill energy required is 8640. Special effects, strength minus 5%. Damage modifier is 120% against poison enemies. Shielding stance, 720. Not 720. 710 over 1 hit. 780 over 1 hit. 850 over 1 hit. Skill energy required the same. Special effects poison and damage modifier is 120% against reduced defense. Co-op ability. Reduce strength and uh, strength and defense punisher 8%. Increases damage to enemies with reduced strength or defense by 8%. Benefits the whole team. Wind strength double buff 10 plus 10%. That's its chain co-op ability. Next, we have White Sparrow, which fills 100% of the skill gauge at the start of quest and increases the duration of debuff skills by 25%. In addition, using the skill will grant the user a strength amp with a maximum team amp level of 3. After this amp is granted, this ability will not grant it again for 30 seconds. White Sparrow Vow 3 reduces susceptibility to freeze and bog by 100%, and then it's just like all the other ones of these, where um, if he gets hit by one of them, he'll get strength for 10 for a strength increase of 15% for 10 seconds, and it, this effect won't activate again for five, for 15 seconds. And then we have Flurry Strength and Poison Edge staying 1. When the combo count is 10 or higher, increase strength by 25% and chance of inflicting poison by 70%, and the duration of poison inflicted of enemies by 30%. Oof. 
And that is his spiral. So, yeah, let's start with what I feel overall is that I feel like this is a fantastic spiral that they've given to my boy Lee here. Most trial of the mighty, um, most trial of the mighty spirals come in one and two flavors. It's okay. And then there is, this is amazing. And this is definitely, this is amazing. Definitely one of the best of Trials of the Mighty has, has had. I don't know if it reaches the pre-Trials of the Mighty spirals, where the old spirals used to break the game. They don't do that anymore because uh, people complain and say like, hey, I want those style of spirals back. And then they forget the whole thing where we spent six months complaining about how these spirals have ruined the game. And then they fix it, and then they complain about the fixing. So they just cut out the middleman and have just made the <laughs> spirals not as good, but still good uh, to certain units. They made them either okay or very good. Uh, so yeah, that's what his kind of spiral feels like to me is a very good variant of it. So let's break it down real quick. This skill, the changes that they've done to this skill is of course actually being able to inflict poison and also dispelling one buff. For wind and a lot of its events, it's very important that you have the spelling of one buff. Um, it's super good. I want to say, if, I, I think almost all endgame content requires you to have a dispel one buff unit, I think, from there. It's really funny that it just came out that way, but yeah. So having that and also the ability to inflict poison on his skill one is fantastic. And they've even been able to buff his second skill, which his second skill was just giving 60% defense, but now it also gives 10% HP, which is nice. Um, but this ability here is, chances are, what most people are going to use it for, which is the ability to just kind of rain down poison, especially with his ability here to, when the combo count is 10 or higher, having a 70% chance of inflicting poison, and also increasing the duration of poison. That just seems kind of given that you always want to be kind of doing poison. And again, like funny enough, previously he used to have a poison poison punisher on pinion slash, but he did not have the ability to poison with skill one as it is. You had to actually skip the skill two if you wanted to do it using his skills alone. Back in the old days, this was before I think um, they even had the concept of like being able to get other adventurer skills. So you either needed to do the skill two twice, which with the cost that it has is just not a very good way of giving people poison or already have a dedicated poison poisoner on the team basically and they've kind of cut the need for him to now he doesn't need a dedicated poisoner he is a poisoner which is a good move on their part i'd say uh, other changes of course is the ability white sparrow here the fact that he now fills 100 percent of skill gauges at the start of the quest is amazing and because previously this if you want to know what this ability was beforehand it was this but it was 20 percent instead of 25 percent so this is a full up upgrade with filling 100% of the skill gauge and also giving a strength amp maximum of 3. The 30 second um, the thirty second timer on it is always a bummer, but at least it's level 3. So there's some units that, as long as you use them with units, I guess I can help out with that. You can do a little better with it. Um, and again, flurry strength usually just be combo count 10 increased strength by I think 20% and this part of it just did not exist so they've added that to him uh, great great additions to him if he was definitely like I said a galley unit that actually legitimately needed help because he's just aged it's not that he aged badly it's that the game aged differently when he was released I think he was the best unit for, one of the best units for win for that exact time period if that makes sense it's like oh yeah for the events that you need to do he was perfect he was great he dealt a lot of good damage but the problem was is that once Galarenzo kind of got crazy buffed he kind of left him out in the wind and then again there ended up being better sword units released um like Templar Hope which again at the time was used for something else um I would also say Morgana Maybe it's just because I have a weird, very weird love for Morgana that I would rank Morgana as, at the time, pre-Spiral, better than Leaf, but Lee. But that is what it is. That's just what I think upon that. But maybe I was, I was thinking more of like a supporter, because if you wanted to use a supporter, as if your main sword was going to be Galaranzel, and you wanted to use another sword unit, because you'd have to, again, pay a whole buttload to use another sword unit, 
um, let's assume you wanted to use um, Templar Hope. So there's two sword units right there. And then if you wanted to use a third one, it would be super expensive. And at that point, you wanted a supporter. And I felt like Morgana was a better supporter than Lee over here. But hopefully this helps him a whole bunch. I'm going to use Omnicide on him. So I'm, I'm going to be able to actually do a video showing off what he does. I think I'm pretty sure that his Trial of the Mighty is the only one that will have a boss fight. It will be Harley and he'll be the only unit you'll be able to use Trial of the Mighty stuff on. So if you want to wait <laughs> the three, six months, whatever long it takes, the three to six months, depending on how you get lucky during things or if you or if you double boost or do stuff like that um you can probably wait out and floor him maybe but i don't know he seems pretty good to me i like what they done i like my boy lee decent enough not decent enough i really do like, i like the way he plays i actually really like that his shielding stance is just him whacking dudes with a with a shield is very funny so I'll gladly use Omnicide on him, see how he is. I really think he's going to end up being fantastic. And I hope that video, when I go to do it, I'll be super happy and I won't be bummed. I think the only time I've ever spiraled a unit and then did a video on him and I was sad was Halloween Ellie's first spiral. Which was maybe the saddest I've ever been for a video. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the end of this video, everyone. Once again, that's how I feel about him. Leave down below how you feel about him. If you think he, they've done a good job, if you think they could have done a little bit better, like obviously they could have maybe done a little bit more with skill too, especially for how expensive it is. Almost 9,000 skill energy for, I don't know, for a Punisher? Is it fair? Do you think it's fair? It doesn't seem like they actually did much to this move. Maybe there wasn't much they needed to do because it was just used for punishing, but. And it, they didn't need to add a strength amp because now it's just in general whenever he uses a skill. So, and again, maybe this offset is also offsetted by this, being able to get 100% skill gauge at the start of turn, at the start of quests. So, yeah, comment, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. You have a good night, you have a good day, goodbye.